a happy Sunday. Did you know that true worship is God-centered? We were created to worship God and nothing else. If you love something more than God, it's called idolatry. God is a jealous God. He says to himself, in Exodus, the second book of the Bible, it says, You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. Let's remember this and remember that worship is about God, nothing else, not even us. So everyone, let's stand on up and let's worship God. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore.
always forgive me. You'll stay by my side no matter what. I will never be alone. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born on the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi friends! Before we start today's story, I want to share with you guys something. And this something is going to help you to understand Pharaoh's hardened heart. Now, I, in one bowl, I have ice. In another bowl, I have this marshmallow tree. Now, which one do you think is Pharaoh's heart? You guys let me know, okay? Now, this is ice. And with ice, I'm going to try to warm it up and see what happens. Friends, what happened? It's melting! Look! The water was splashing! Wow, so that's what happens with the warm heart. Let's see this heart. Nothing's happening, guys. This is a warm heart where it's being melted away with fire or with the blow dryer. And this, my friends, is a marshmallow tree and nothing happened, it's still the same. Which one do you think is Pharaoh's heart? The ice or the marshmallow? You let me know, okay? Bye guys, let's see which is Pharaoh's heart. Hmm. Bye guys. Alright. Hi guys, I hope everyone's doing okay at home. I actually missed you a lot this week. And I'm so happy and excited to be in front of you guys today. Did everyone have a good week? I hope so. Hmm, you guys know why I'm here, right? I'm here to share with you God's Word. Hmm, I wonder what message God has for us today. Well, before we start, I just want to show you guys a few things. Number one, what is this that I have? It's a gold Trophy. Now a lot of my kids space junior kids might know, but when do we get this trophy? Well, hmm, when do we get this trophy? Well, we get it when we memorize a few of God's word. Number one, mm, the Old Testament, the books in the Bible, the books of the New Testament, Lord's Prayer, Apostles' Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Now friends, the reason why I want you guys to memorize the books in the Bible, Ten Commandments, Lord's Creed, and Apostles' Creed is because right now you guys are very young. The things that you guys remember now, you won't forget it. 
And now God's word is really important. And I want you guys to have the foundation of God's word. So you know all the story and you know the truth. And then as you guys get older, you can build on your faith. That's my job to try to teach you the foundation of your faith. You guys are young and you guys are really, really smart and you can memorize God's word. So hopefully you guys can start now. So if you guys memorize all five things while you guys are home, just have your mom send me videos of the things that you memorized and we will have your trophy ready with your name on it. And it will say, mm, Aaron. <gasps> Wow! And then on the bottom it will say master. <gasps> Bible master that is. So if you want your trophy with all the goodies inside, don't forget to memorize God's word and send it over. And I will have it ready for you so that when you come back to church, <gasps> it will be ready in the worship hall. Okay, so that's the trophy that I wanted to share with you. Hmm, I wonder what message God has for us. Before we start, I'm gonna have Bible boy, Mateo. He's going to read today's message. And this is the word of the Lord. Hey everybody, it's me, Bible boy. I hope you guys are well. And I'm here to read the Bible verse for you guys today. Exodus 3:14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Exodus 3:14. <gasps> Mateo, thank you so much for reading to us every week God's word. Now, I want all of my friends to always have the Bible ready so that when Mateo reads it, you guys will always be ready. Now on this word, we're going to hear the story about the 10 plagues. How many? 10. Now these terrible plagues were a mighty act of judgment. Mm, judgment to the Egyptians, for they needed to be punished. Not only were they acts of judgment, but it was also miracle signs and wonders. And each plague got worse than the other plague. So one, it was kind of okay. Second one, <gasps> third, <gasps> fourth, fifth. It got worse as it went down the list. And in the history of all of Egyptians, mankind, the tenth one was the grand one. And a lot of them arrived, or all of them arrived, at the command of Moses. And they left only with God's power. And Pharaoh, as he sit on his mighty throne, he could do nothing because he could not stand against the power of God. And this is how the story went. Joseph and his brothers, they grew very old and they died. And their children's children all stayed in Egypt where they became a very large family. And later on, a new king began to rule. But this Pharaoh did not remember Joseph and he didn't like God's people. <gasps> What he did was he made them into slaves and he hit them and beat them and made them work harder and harder. You see the Israelites, they were really good workers. Each adult in one whole day can make one brick. <gasps> did you guys know how to make brick? Well, they take clay and they mold it into a brick and each of them could make 65 bricks in one day. It was a lot of work, a lot. Tears and sweat would come down their face and God's people will cry out to God to rescue them. Remember, we're doing a series. And in this series, we're talking about God's redemptive plan. It's a four-step plan of Creation, fall, redemption, and restoration. And in the part of redemption, 
We're going to talk about a big word. Rescue. Can my friends at home say the word rescue? Rescue. God's going to rescue his people, the Israelites. And today we're going to talk about the mini rescue. But later on, we're going to talk about the big rescue. Get ready for that, my friends. Now in today's rescue story, God's going to hear the Israelites cry out. And he's going to remember the promise that he made with Abraham that he would look after his people and he would find a way to set them free. Yes. And one day, Moses was tending after his sheep while something is going to catch his eye. A bush is going to be behaving very oddly. It was flickering with flames. But wait, the leaves weren't burning up. He's going to take a closer look with his eyes to open them. And as he goes to take a closer look, he's going to hear his name. Moses! <gasps> it's going to boom a loud voice. Moses! And Moses is going to leap back. The bush is talking to him. And God's going to say, I have heard my people's cries, God says. I have seen their tears and I have come down to, oh, here's the big word, rescue them. Go to Pharaoh and tell them, let my people go free. And you see, Moses was afraid. Moses was so afraid. But God said, I will be with you. So, even though Moses is afraid, he's going to put on his big boy shoes and get his big boy Aaron to go with him to Pharaoh. And he's going to go to Pharaoh and Moses is going to begin like this. Pharaoh, God said, hmm? Pharaoh said, God? Who is this God that you speak of? I've never heard of God. And Moses is going to continue and says, God said, let my people go free. And Moses is going to continue to speak of God. But Pharaoh, oh, he's never heard of who God is. And not only is he not going to, to even listen to Moses, but he's going to say, don't want to, won't, can't, not going to let the Hebrew slaves go free. And so he didn't. And God's going to give for Pharaoh 10 warnings or 10 terrible plagues or 10 miracle signs and wonders. And in these 10 plagues, he's going to call it the 10 plagues. That's right. I said it, friends. The 10 plagues. And first, God is going to, I'm going to show you, my friends. <gasps> He's going to take blood into the Nile River. Aaron is going to struck the Nile River with his staff. And the water is going to turn to blood. The fish is going to die. And... The Egyptians were not able to drink out of the Nile River. The river's going to smell pee. But the weird thing is, Pharaoh's magicians were able to do the same thing. But Pharaoh is going to refuse. Even though the Egyptians were not able to drink from this river and they were not able to drink blood, He's going to refuse and he's not going to let the Egyptians go free. And because of that, Moses is going to say, Pharaoh, you don't know God? You don't know of his powers? Oh, but soon you will. And soon he's going to stretch out his hands. And seven days later, Aaron stretches out his staff 
and there's going to be oh, frogs everywhere. Frogs in their hair. Frogs on their hair. Frogs in their nose. I'm not gonna put this in my nose. Frogs in their beds. Frogs are going to be jumping and hopping everywhere. But the crazy thing is, even Pharaoh's magicians were able to bring frogs out from the air. And now Pharaoh says, Moses, I can't take these frogs hopping and jumping and stomping everywhere. Moses, please pray to God and worship him and tell him to put the frogs away. So just as Pharaoh says, Moses is going to do that. He's going to cry out to God and ask the frogs to go away. Yes, friends, he's going to pray and all of the frogs are going to die. Yes. But Pharaoh does not keep his promise. Even though he said if the frogs went away, he will send the Hebrew slaves free, his heart is hardened and he changes his mind and he says, mm, no, no way, Jose, I'm keeping the slaves. And he changes his mind. And because of that, God's going to send down his third plague. And in this third plague, Aaron's gonna strike dust and swarms of lice and gnats are going to be filled in people's hair in the air. But friends, Pharaoh's heart is still hardened and he will not let the Hebrew slaves go free. Remember, each of them can build 65 bricks a day. Now, if there are a million of slave workers, 65 times couple of million is a lot. And that was bricks that Pharaoh needed for his little kingdom. And he refused to let go of the Hebrew slaves. And God sent down this third plague, but friends, it's going to get worse. This lice or gnats that are going to be filled in the air, it's going to do nothing. Pharaoh's heart is hardened then he's going to send down, God is going to send down the fourth plague into the Israelites. But not to the Israelites, only to the Egyptian. Flies are going to be covered in the land of Egypt, except where the Israelites are. And friends, I brought a few of my flies. Can you imagine flies this big covering everywhere? your eyes, your face, everywhere around you. There's going to be billions of flies going to be covered in the land of the Egyptians. And it's gonna make Pharaoh really upset. And friends, the magicians, they were not able to send flies or they were not able to take away the flies. Only Moses can do that with God's command. And you see these flies are going to be flying all around and Moses is going to tell God, God, please send the flies away. And when he does that, the flies all disappear. And next, because Pharaoh, oh, he changed his mind over and over, he's going to do the fifth plague and he's going to tell Pharaoh, if you refuse, tomorrow animals will be plagued. Horses, donkeys, camels, sheep, and goats will all have plagues and they will all die. All the livestock and all of your food will die. So sadly, I have my little animal figures, the donkeys and goats, and all of these things are going to be plagued and they're going to die at Moses' command. And the people were not able to eat meat. 
friends, how many of you love me? Mm, my husband loves me. Now, would you imagine if your, your food was all bad and you couldn't eat it for a couple of days? Oh, my husband would be so sad. And the Israelites were sad too. And because of that, Pharaoh said, Moses, we need this meat in order for the Egyptians to eat. Will you, could you send them away? And I will send the Hebrews free. And Moses said, okay. And he prayed to God and he asked all of the livestock to go away. But as soon as the livestock plague went away, Pharaoh changed his mind again. And that's when he's going to send the sixth plague. And this sixth plague is a pretty bad one. Remember I told you, as the plagues get down and down and down, as we go for the bigger numbers, it's going to get worse. And the sixth one is pretty bad because Moses, he's going to take dust and in front of the people, and they're going to have boils all over their bodies. Can you imagine having all of these thoughts all over your head to toe? Well, the Egyptians did. And they were so painful and they hurt so much. They were itchy. They were painful. They were burning. Can you imagine having this? And Pharaoh said, Moses, please, please. My people are hurting with boils all over their body. Please take it away. And just as Moses could, because God is powerful, remember? You see, Pharaoh's magician, they might have been able to turn the water in the Nile River blood, or they might have able, even a, been able to bring frogs into the land. But one thing, or a lot of the things they couldn't do was this one, and this one was boils. They couldn't get rid of it, or they couldn't even bring it up. This was the limit to the, the Pharaoh's magician's power. But our God has no limits, none. And we're going to see that in today's story. So Moses is going to pray for the boils to go away. And just as he prayed, they will go away. But Pharaoh's heart is hardened. And he does not obey God. And he does not send the Hebrew slaves free. But they have to get free, guys. Remember? You see, Abraham and God made a promise, and God promised Abraham that he would rescue his people and take care of them. And so he's going to send a ferocious, plague number seven, a ferocious fire and hailstone to the land and all of mankind only to the Egyptians and not to the Israelites. Oh, it's not going to hit the Hebrew slaves, but it's going to hit the Egyptians. And a lot of them are gonna die. Whoever was outside are gonna get hit with this hailstone or the fire, and they're going to die. And Pharaoh's gonna say, stop it, Moses, please. My people are dying. The hail and this ferocious fire is killing my people, stop it. So Moses prays and it goes away, but Pharaoh's heart is hardened again and again and again and again. And he changes his mind again and again and again. And God knows, oh, mm, got to send out the bad boy. So that's what he's going to do. Moses, for the eighth plague, which one? Eight. He's going to raise his staff over Egypt. An east wind is gonna blow in the night and bring swarms of locusts into the night. And it's going to cover the ground, making it look black and eat everything growing on the ground until nothing green remained in the land. And Pharaoh's gonna beg Moses to pray and stop the plague. And then he would free the slaves. And Moses is going to pray and the wind direction is going to change, blowing the locusts into the Red Sea. Oh, I forgot to show you my locusts or my grasshoppers. 
Because you see, this was covering the land. Oh, can you imagine this? I'm putting it in my hair. All in the red, all in the areas? Yes. But Moses is going to pray in the wind direction. It's going to press, it's going to push it into the Red Sea. But once again, as you guys know at home, Pharaoh does not change his mind. His heart is hardened again. And you see, we're now here at the ninth plague. And Moses is going to stretch out his hand and total darkness is going to come in the land for three days. And only where the Hebrew slaves live, that's where there's going to be light. But everywhere else where the, where the Egyptians were is darkness. Can you imagine living in a land of darkness? How many of you guys had a blackout recently? I did. For a couple of hours, my electricity and everything did not work. Oh, we needed candles. We needed light. My kids were scared. We couldn't do much. We needed the internet for homeschooling and we didn't have any of those. Those couple of hours were so dreadful. I can't imagine what the Egyptians were going through in darkness for three days. And Pharaoh's gonna summon Moses and say, go and worship your God. Take your women and your children as well, but you must leave your animals behind. But Moses says, no. Our animals, they must travel with us because we needed to offer sacrifices to God. Pharaoh says, get out of my sight. Get out of my sight before you die. Don't ever appear before me. Moses says, hmm, okay, just as you say, I won't appear before you again, but I know you're gonna change your mind so know this, God had planned 10 plagues and the last one, the ninth one was darkness and the 10th one is this, midnight, the firstborn son of every family and animal will die and there will be weeping and wailing everywhere except among God's people. And Moses told the Hebrew slaves to sacrifice a lamb and put some of the blood around the door flames of the houses. And at midnight, the firstborn son of every Egyptian family was found dead. And all in the houses with blood around the door flames were spared. And Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, up! Leave my people and go and worship the Lord God. Take your families and animals and just leave. You see, the 10th plague was the biggest of them all. At midnight, even Pharaoh's son died. And finally, Moses heard the words that God wanted. He finally heard the words that he was waiting for, for all this time. Go. However, once the slaves had, were gone, Pharaoh changed his mind again. And he's going to get on his chariot and gather his troops, about 600 of them. And he's going to chase after the escaping Hebrews. And he had them trapped in front of the Red Sea. And when the Hebrew slaves safely got on the other side? Mm. God's going to do one of the craziest miracle of them all. Friends, remember I told you the 10 plagues? They were miracles and signs of wonders, but this is the biggest one. Those were the 10 plagues. And I call this the super duper 11th miracle that's gonna happen during this time. He's going to have Moses raise his hand over the sea, and at daybreak, the walls of the water are going to collapse and dry path disappear. And what's going to happen is the, the water is going to split open the Red Sea. The Israelites are going to walk 
After all the Israelites walk over, oh, that's when the water is going to collapse again and dry land is going to disappear and the whole army of Pharaoh will be swiped away and none of the um, Pharaoh and his people and the Egyptians will survive. And Moses and the people on the shore, they knew that God had finally rescued them and delivered them. And the people are going to know that they were free at last. Remember I told you in the beginning, they were always waiting for God, for His rescue plan, for His redemption to come and save the people. And God's people will always remember this rescue and they will call it the Passover. But a greater rescue was coming. Many years later, oh, many, 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 many years later, God was going to do it again. He was going to come down once again to rescue His people. But this time, God was going to set His people free forever and ever. Yes, forever. You see, after the people were free from the Egyptians, oh, they're going to go in captive a few times. The Babylonians are gonna come, they're going to be taken captive. The Israelites, even though they enter into this land, the promised land, oh, so many bad things are going to be happening. The people are gonna cry out for a redeemer, a rescuer. And many, many years later, He's going to send His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross to rescue us from our sins. Now, friends, I'm sure you guys heard the story about the 10 plagues and everything that God did, all of His signs and all of His wonders. And right now, you're home. We can't go outside. We can't see our friends. We can't go to school. But friends, I want you to always remember that our God is a rescuer. He has a rescue plan always, not just for the Israelites and not just for our, from our sins, but even right now. I know a lot of you guys are home and you guys are just wondering, hmm, God, what are you going to do soon? Well, hang on tight. Don't worry, friends. He has a rescue plan and He is coming soon to save us from all things. Now, don't forget guys, God's rescue plan is always awesome and it's always big. So, don't ever be afraid of darkness. Don't ever be afraid of any diseases because the rescue plan is coming. I can't wait to see what God does soon. And I'm sure you guys can't wait too. Now, uh, a lot of you guys are still home and you're probably wondering, what is Pastor Diana's message next? Well, in this slide, I want you guys to take a look at the slide and take a guess. like a good one. But friends, if you guys know the answer, just have your mom just message me the answer and I'm gonna tell you whether it's right or wrong. So don't forget God's rescue plan and don't forget He's always with us because in the Bible it says, He will never leave us and He will never forsake us. So if we can all put our hands together and pray. Dear God, thank you so much for being the almighty God even though Pharaoh sat at his throne, God, you are so much more powerful and wonderful than any other Pharaoh or king or anyone or anything. Thank you for being the almighty God. Lord, at this time as we're home, help us to just be patient and just wait for your rescue plan of what's going to happen next. God, we love you so much and we praise you and we thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <gasps> Friends, 
We've come to an end, and I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for listening to God's story, and I pray that you guys at home will continue to obey your parents and do your schoolwork and don't fight with your siblings. I love you so much, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys! Bible chapters for kids. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea. Joel and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. It's everyone free, a gift for you, for me Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy Joshua, Judges, Ruth 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job Psalms and Proverbs Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea, Joel and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah. It's a letter from God that sets everyone free A gift for you, for me